Hey, Chris Lipe here with how to get better distortion out of your voice in three approachable steps if you follow the steps correctly. I wanna hear, I wanna feel what I thought was never real. I wanna let go of the pain I felt so wrong. I wanna hear, I wanna feel like I'm close to something real. I wanna find something I want it all along. Somewhere I belong. I wanna hear, I wanna feel like I'm somewhere I belong. Part of developing healthy and good sounding distortion in your voice is by having an awareness of different points of resistance and how things feel in different parts of your vocal tract. If you'd like more help with this, I have a free course called Seven Highly Effective Vocal Exercises That Won't Annoy Your Neighbors. If you haven't joined it yet, there's a link below in the video description. Join that free course. It's seven lessons and it helps you unlock some of these sensations and strange things about your voice that I'm going to touch on in this video on a deeper level and you can do it and you can do it quietly which is really cool all right here are the 3 steps for developing better distortion in your own voice first find your compression threshold i haven't talked about this specifically on the channel before we, if you've been following my channel, you know that compression is holding back air, learning to manage your airflow. And a lot of times you see me do this. I'm lifting this heavy desk and as I lift the desk, I tend to hold back air. I use my false cords without even thinking about it as I lift something heavy to try to lift this desk. That affects my vocal tone. If I sing a note, hey, and then harness that sensation of lifting something heavy, hey, as I lift my desk, it starts to sound trapped. But if I balance airflow and support with that holding back of air, hey, oh, hmm. There was a point at which I was adding enough air to compensate for the fact I was holding back air where I started to get a little bit broken up, right? This is the compression threshold I'm talking about. You have to feel it out. The easiest way to do it is literally sing a note and try to lift something heavy. Try to hold that pitch steady. Make it a comfortable note. Hey, hey, you can hear it kind of going in and out. This is, this is the compression threshold for healthy grit. This kind of tricks your body or aligns things correctly or helps you use your tissues in the right way if you're supporting correctly. I've talked a lot about proper support and I talk more about support in my free course. If you've got that lined up, feeling out this threshold where you cross from simply it feeling sort of pinched off to being a clean, more powerful, compressed voice, and then right on the edge of grit. Hey! This can take a while to feel out, but absolutely having this, this bodily gesture, right? Hey! Hey! Experiment with different parts of your range. Just do it over hey for now. Hey. And you can hear me kind of getting there, balancing how much push I need uh, with how much I'm lifting here. Now, it's important that you don't create tension in other parts of your body. You don't want to be going, hey. you want to be loose. Let you know, in this case, my, my biceps and, and, you know, partially my shoulder muscles. 
Another way to do this is to, is to do a, a body weight squat. And as you squat up, really focus on your, your leg muscles as you kind of go uh, uh, and pay attention to that threshold where you, you your grunts become, they go from clean and sort of trapped to slightly gritty. Again, this is not instant. I don't want to see any comments of, I tried it and I can't do it. You have to do this over and over and over again and really experiment with it. Okay, so that's tip one. Find your compression breakup threshold. Step two, use vowels. Don't let them get in the way. Harness the difficulty of some vowels to help you ease into your distortion. Chester Bennington is a master at this. Some of his best tone that he gets when he's distorted comes off of the E vowel. So if we take this idea of the compression threshold and we say the word C or free or B or whatever you want to do, the vowel needs to be E on a middle chesty, maybe slightly higher chesty note, E. That's not the best sounding yet, but what I'm doing with that E vowel, e, as I'm approaching that compression threshold, is I am trying to place it as forward as possible and feel as much vibration in my face as possible as, as I ease into my compression. E, you can hear it getting more brash. My, my compression is, is becoming more extreme and I'm moving that note with my mind. I'm moving that, the placement of that forward. You can even see my jaw move forward just slightly. That's not a tense jaw. That's just placing the resonance. You can even hear me experimenting with my, my nasality. Turn that on and off and experiment with placing it so that your distortion feels comfortable and higher in your throat. Not like this. We don't want that, at least for right now. We want hear that? And there's some weird tones going on. As I play with my compression threshold and placing that vowel, it will become a cleaner, tighter sounding grit. Listen. That has less of that, that sort of awkward overtone in there, right? Then practice moving this around in your range. Now, because you're on your eval, if you're just starting to work with distortion, your range is going to feel limited. Don't worry about that. Right now, just worry about making these transitions. Then you can finish it off with a different vowel. Maybe maybe something like this. Once you've got those balances. And then as your voice sort of breaks apart as you change vowels, lean into that even more. And it creates this nice sort of playground of different sonic variances in your grit. So we're using vowels. And in this case, as I, as I get closer and closer to the end of that phrase, yeah, I open the vowel up once I found the placement through E. And then as my voice starts to fall apart, as I'm moving my placement around, I lean into that. I add more support. I think more compression and it allows me to open up that grit, open up that distortion. There's a couple more sounds for you. So I'm gradually opening those vowels up and yeah, I'm, I'm moving some air, but I'm not moving as much air as you think. I'm compressing more as I'm working with the vowels. All right. 
Step number three. We've all got money notes. Notes that we know are really comfortable and also sound really good in our voice. Use these to capitalize on your distortion and reserve your distortion for the money note and let everything around it be pretty clean. Approach your compression threshold, but don't let yourself get gritty on purpose until you hit your money note. This is going to create all sorts of happy accidents, but this is a fantastic way to really lean into your voice in an area that's comfortable and then let other notes that are also fairly comfortable, but that are not as aggressive surround it. It's going to help you develop over the long term really, really versatile distortion because you're capitalizing on a strong point, both from a sensation point of view and an auditory point of view with your voice. So for me, uh, one of my money notes that I really enjoy is B4. Yay! I like that note because I can sing it in a lot of different ways. And you may have notes like that too, or maybe you're working in that direction. I've done other videos on that. Yeah! So I'm going to work in and around that note, and I'm going to intentionally make this note using my vowels for me and playing with my compression threshold. Hey! Yes, I'm on E. Hey! Hey! I'm going to make a little line around my money note. Yeah, one where I, I come down from it and one where I go up to it. Yeah. Uh. So everything else around it is just good, but not gritty. We don't need to be gritty everywhere. We can be gritty on our aggressive money notes and sort of trick our voice into coming along for the ride with the rest of the notes eventually. Or... Let yourself screw up. Be free with it. Let your voice crack as you're experimenting. But really dig into this. What we're doing is we're sort of arcing in to these to this money note and then experimenting with some of the other things I've talked about. But you're also giving yourself permission to rest within the phrase, within the line. You're giving yourself permission to uh, have different resonances and different things going on in your voice so that you're, it's not just like, okay, I got to sing with distortion, and you're turning it on and off. You're practicing easing into it and out of it. Hey! Now, right there, there was a different sort of area where the grit kind of came naturally. Because I wasn't trying to trying to be gritty everywhere, my voice kind of fell back into the posture that I had on my money note. Lots of happy accidents. Oh, hey! Oh, hey! Oh, there I went down a whole step. And I felt my voice kind of start to fall apart, so I leaned into it. Ooh. Oh! 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 There, that, oh, I lifted something really heavy right there! And there again. So it's this idea of choosing a note and then letting your voice do whatever it wants to do around that note. But choose a note that you like. Doesn't have to be B4. Probably won't be B4. It'll probably be some other note. Experiment with how many ways you can bring other notes in and around that note and practice the other two tips with it. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, if you want more tips like this, again... Click that link below and join my seven highly effective exercises that won't annoy your neighbors course and get into exploring vocal tract sensations 
a little bit more. We'll see you for more videos later.